Hello YouTubers, welcome to my shop. I'm going to do a review on the Cobalt 9 and 3 quarter inch bench plane. Um, a few comments about it online, but uh, just wanted to go through the unboxing and kind of tell you what I think. So as usual, <laughs> this, this plastic packaging is, you got to be a gorilla to get into it, right? But one of the things I wanted to notice is that uh, like the other cobalt tools, it's got a lifetime guarantee. So, um, that's not a bad thing, but uh, the guarantee is that they will replace it. And if it's a crappy plane, they'll probably replace it with another crappy plane. So the plane came with instructions, and uh, not that we need instructions, but uh, I'd, I'd note it shows a rounded bevel on the blade here and then a more square edge here and I, I bought this plane and didn't mind spending 30 bucks for it because I've got a number four and a number four and a half and a Stanley 45 and a shoulder plane and a lot of different planes but uh, my intention is to use this as a scrub plane so I'm going to uh, grind the bevel at that rounded edge uh, is my intention but uh, next step is to take it apart and see how she's put together. So here's the blade and the leather the lever cap, and with the lever cap, um, you can see this or not, you can see the, the fit and finish is not wonderful, but uh, I didn't have very high expectations for a $30 plane, and uh, here's the blade and chip breaker, we'll take that apart. I don't know if I do this one hand or not, let's see. Oh, yeah. So, the blade seems fairly sharp. I'm anxious to see what kind of steel it's got in it. Kind of hard to do this and film at the same time. But uh, here's the blade. Of course, it's got oil and stuff all over it. But uh, I'll see how flat that is. It's, it's got a bit of an edge on it, which is. I might take a shaving with that just before we do, but uh, as far as the chip breaker goes, I'm sure that you know, just, you know, there's a burr right there that's going to need some work to be flat. So, here's the plane with the frog, and you can see the, where the blade rides on the frog, that that's a machine surface. So the next thing I'll do is take the frog out and uh, see what we've got underneath. Okay. Frog removed, so um, here you can see the bottom of it, and it's got machine surfaces uh, on the bottom to bed the frog, but inside the body, the surfaces that those ride on are, are painted, so I'm not sure what kind of performance that we'll get out of that. But, uh, you know, the great thing is um, that the frog is adjustable, so you can move the frog up and down to open or close the mouth, which is a great feature. And while I have this apart, I'll also tighten these handles. But uh, just to give you a look, uh, you can see that the mouth looks pretty good. I'll probably file that front edge just a little bit to make sure it's straight. But uh, so far, so good. So let me tell you what I've done so far. Um, I took a mill file, pretty fine mill file, and I've gone around all the edges. They were really, really sharp, and uh, you know, around the front and back edge, and especially the snob back here. You can see the how I took the corners off. Look at that. That reflects. And I also did that along these edges just to, to smooth them and it just makes the plane feel a lot better. Um, on the cap iron, you can see that, uh, put that on the diamond stone and got that till I could see metal all the way across to make that flat and did the same thing with the chip breaker. The chip breaker is pretty thin, it's like a just a stamped piece of sheet metal, so just want to give you an idea of what I've done so far. Next thing for me to do is to, I'm going to file the front of the mouth just a little bit to make it straight and then 
on the blade a little bit, and then we'll put her back together. So I did a little work on the blade. Um, too lazy to get my water stones out. So I kind of used the cheating method where I put a business card on the back of it so I could get to the, just to the edge instead of trying to flatten the hole back. But I think you can see by the shiny spot here that it would take quite a bit of work to, to get it flat. Also, the grind is relatively coarse. So even raising the edge and just trying to uh, home the edge, I didn't still, still didn't get all those scratch marks out. So I just put just a, a <laughs> an edge on it. It's not scary sharp like my other planes are, but it'll be okay for the demonstration. So next thing I'm gonna do is uh, put the chip breaker in, uh, blade back together and put it back in the plane and adjust the frog forward and back where I want it and uh, we'll see what kind of shaving it takes. So I put the plane back together and uh, chip breaker and had adjusted the frog and uh, if you can see uh, I've got the chip breaker set about a sixteenth of an inch back from the edge of the blade and Little pieces of wood are going between the chip breaker and the back of the blade, which means that this may be a little too thin. Uh, for my purposes, I'm gonna use this as a scrub plane, so this chip breaker will be further back, but I set it up to try to take a fine shaving, and that was definitely not successful. So I've got the plane back together. Got to work make the shaving, and you can see how how uneven the shaving is. It's thick here and then thin here and then thick here. And I've got the plane set up with the really wide mouth. Um, but again, trying to take a fine cut, but I suspect, and I haven't checked yet, but I suspect that the bottom is probably not very flat. So that's the next thing to do. Um, I don't know if I can do that and film at the same time. Let's see if I can somewhere where we can get some more light here. I have to retract the blade all the way, of course. There's quite a bit of slop in the blade adjuster, but uh, that's expected. And when you check plane bottoms for being flat, you want to do that with everything locked in yeah I can tell pretty flat on that side but on this side there's quite a gap starting just in front of the mouth and uh, I don't think I can hold this up to the light so that you can see that I don't know if you can see that gap and the autofocus on my camera wasn't let, won't let you, but uh, quite a bit of work to do to flatten the bottom, but uh, nothing that can't be fixed, so I will do some flattening and then uh, come back with my final verdict. Now just a note about preparing these bench planes. Um, there's all kinds of information on YouTube about how to sharpen the iron, how to set it up, and you know, if you want a wide mouth or a narrow mouth and all that stuff. So, I mean, there, that information's out there for you to learn if you want to go dig for it. But uh, my purpose here was just to kind of do a quick evaluation of this plane. But uh, I'll come back when we've, when I've uh, tuned it and actually honed the blade like I want it, and we'll see what it does. About halfway through the flattening process, and I just wanted to show you where I was so far. What I did was put a, took a magic marker and put a crosshatch pattern on the bottom so I could kind of gauge my progress. And it's obviously where the marker is gone is where I've flattened and where it remains is where I haven't touched yet. So that gives you a sense of uh, what the shape of the bottom was like. Um, what I'm really, really looking for, I'm sorry the light's not so good, um, I really want 
wood contact all the way across the front of the mouth here. That's just very, very important for the function of the plane. And I've taken quite a few por uh, uh, strokes on a coarse diamond stone to get it to this point. So the, the bottom was nowhere near flat, but uh, I didn't expect it to be overly flat. And I, you know, so far I don't see any reason this can't be a great plane. Uh, without with just a little TLC, but uh, let me keep scrubbing on this thing. And after some more work flattening the sole, um, that's where I am. As you can probably see here at the front, maybe you can, maybe you can't. There's there's still a little bit of a dip, so you can see where the low spot is all the way around through here that I haven't got out yet. But like I said, I bought this for a scrubbing plane, so the, the plane's gonna be rounded, and um, I'm curious to know how well, what, what kind of shaving it'll take with the work that I've done. So I'll do that, and we'll see what it does. Okay, I was uh, going to try to take the shaving with the bottom flat, and was looking from the side and noticed that, that there's a, with the cap on, that there was a gap between the blade and the frog. I thought, well, usually when you see that, you haven't put the plane back together well, and you haven't engaged the side-to-side -side adjustment lever in the hole here. But uh, with this one seated like it's supposed to be, it's not sitting against the frog. And the reason it's not sitting against the frog is that the top of this hits the underside of the uh, chip breaker so it's not letting the blade seat against the frog. So I've got to figure out how to bring this part that does the side to side adjusting down so that the blade will seat against the frog. So we'll, we'll play with that next. Okay, what I did my first impulse was to take a hammer and tap it, but uh, you know, with all these pieces being cast and that's just a little rivet there, it's probably not a good idea. So what I did was just take a pair of ice grip pliers and uh, just gradually pinch that down until the, the blade would sit against the frog, which it does now. You see that or not? So I think I've you know, still see air. It may not be far enough, but anyway, I'll 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 keep adjusting that until the I know that the blade is seated against the frog, and then we'll go from there. Well, I guess it's time for a final verdict. Um, so this is a shaving that I took with it, which is. I don't know how thick that is, maybe three thousandths, but uh, it's almost full length. Uh, this this is poplar, so it's pretty even grain. So that, after flattening and then fixing the problem with the side to side adjuster, um, pretty pretty decent shaving, I have to admit. And uh, certainly, after I redo the blade and use the plane for what I want it for, I think it will work just fine. Um, and just to mention what I was doing, I've got a Wood River from Woodcraft four and a half here, and I would I would go back and flatten the surface before I would hit it with the cobalt plane, but uh, I think she's going to work. And uh, if I wanted to set it up as a smoothing plane, it would take a lot more work. <laughs> but uh, like I said, to, to use it as a scrub plane, uh, I think that's going to work just great. Uh, if you enjoy these videos and uh, want to see me do more, I'll buy a tripod and actually get set up to do some video production, but uh, thank you for watching.